For the 11th time in the tournament's 49-year history, Charlotte plays host to the ACC. Regular season champs for the first time in 18 years, athletic and deep, Maryland and Gary Williams have unfinished business. Duke has dominated over the last six seasons, led by the league's premier trio. A perennial national contender, North Carolina has suffered through the worst season in school history. Season bets kept the Deeks among the elite, while a new cast has the pack back in the 20-win club. Did Virginia's win over Duke get a spot in the big dance? All eyes are on the Queen City for the answers. Let the games begin. The ACC tournament is next. From the Charlotte Coliseum, this is the 49th ACC Tournament. The opening game of the quarterfinals with Florida State taking on number two, Maryland. Later today, we'll have Virginia against NC State. Then in tonight's session, North Carolina and Duke meet for the first time ever in the quarterfinals. And we cap it off with Georgia Tech against Wake Forest. Good afternoon, everybody. Mike Patrick, Jay Billis. It is great to have you with us from the ACC. Florida State survived last night. They beat Clemson in overtime as Delvon Arrington had a career high. The reward, you get to play Maryland. With no rest after an overtime game. And the key for Florida State really is to get off to a good start. And Delvon Arrington, the point guard, as he goes, so goes Florida State. Arrington played 44 minutes against Clemson. You can expect Maryland to go after him from the opening tap. Maryland's goal was not the regular season championship. Their goal is not the tournament championship. They have bigger fish to fry. And that's why they've done so well. 15-1 and one in the regular season because they've kept their horizon low and taken it one game at a time, as they say. The key's been Juan Dixon. His leadership, not only his leadership, his play has been magnificent. 25 points per game against Florida State in the two games they played. Take a look at the starting lineups. First for the Terrapins, the familiar faces of Mouton, Baxter, and Wilcox. Blake and Juan Dixon, the All-American, in the backcourt. For the Seminoles of Florida State, the one last night, Wallace Kowski, Big Jelly in the middle, and Antoine Dixon up front, Delvon Arrington, Monty Cummings, the guards. They both played extremely well last night. Florida State late, coming out of its huddle with Steve Robinson in his fifth year. It has been a struggle. A lot of rumors surrounding his future. The future is certainly set for Gary Williams with a new contract, his 13th year at Maryland. They have won more than 100 games in the last four years, the best four-year span for any Maryland program. Well, the Maryland program's never been in better shape than it is right now. Not only the Final Four last year, just a magnificent performance all season long. A consistent team at an excellent level. Blake, the ACC's assist leader, starts it off. Florida State starting out in a 2-3 zone. They play a tandem up top, trying to save their legs as long as possible on this one. Baxter, nice dish to Wilcox. Well, so you get that ball into the middle of the zone and it collapses and you can find a lot of good things. The middle is a soft spot. And Wilcox from point blank range, you can forget it. A block, and Dixon comes up with a loose ball. The Terps on the run. Ray Dixon, nice kick out to Mouton for three. Wallace Kowski tips it out. Feed inside, missed dunk. Then Mouton with a foul. Looked like Wilcox was trying to decide just how hard he wanted to throw it down. <laughs> Real hard. More than high enough to get it down, too. Cummings comes back the other way. He's stuffed again. Florida State hasn't been able to get one to the rim yet. And Blake throws it away. An uncharacteristic turnover. Cummings. Baxter got a piece of that one, but he also got a piece of Cummings. That may be one you would want to see Lonnie Baxter let go because you could see from half court and across that he was going to foul. Arrington, 24 points, 6 assists, 6 rebounds. Pretty good line in that win over Clemson. Went to overtime. And as you would expect, the Seminoles felt they had the advantage in overtime with their senior dominated lineup, all that experience. 
This is an athletic Florida State team. They are very good on the offensive glass. And that is a key for them today. When they do miss shots, they've got to go after the ball and try to get some high percentage second looks. When they shoot the ball reasonably well, they're threatening to anybody, and the win over Duke was a certain illustration of that. Well, getting off to a good start important in this game. The last time these two teams played, it was 22-9 Maryland. Very early in that ball game, and it was really over before it started. Great pass. Getting it into the middle is really important, whether by the pass or the drive. Dixon with a leaner. And Nigel Dixon with a rebound. Three Dixons in this ball game. And Juan Dixon, the All-American, knocks down the jumper. 6-1 Turks. It is so important against Maryland to protect the basketball. And it's not just Juan Dixon that can take it from you. Steve Blake has excellent hands, as does Byron Mouton. Arrington has to protect the ball for the Seminoles to have a shot. Maryland, an underrated defensive team, keeping their opponents to under 40% on the season. Arrington with a running hook from the lane. Now, he's such an underrated player. Because Florida State does not win a whole lot of games, he doesn't get the credit he deserves to be an outstanding player. Baxter leans in. Ronnie Baxter would love to have a big tournament. He was selected second team ACC to the uh, surprise and disgust of many people in the uh, state of Maryland. Uh, one of the reasons, and this may not be a, uh, a politically correct thing to say, but Maryland doesn't have a whole lot of votes. Well, the two major newspapers up there do not participate in the voting for philosophical reasons, so they don't get a lot of support. Runner by Arrington, Nigel Dixon, a tremendous offensive rebounder because of that girth. Once he's got position, you're not moving, period. Well, you'd like to be able to tell your guys, hey, look, block him out. What's the matter with you? But it's like blocking out three guys at one time. He has been averaging nearly a double-double in the last two and a half weeks. Turks throw it away. Here comes Arrington. One-on-one -on -one against Blake. Drops it for Cummings. And Cummings can get up there. And they are really running the floor very well. When Florida State has had an opportunity to get out on the break, they have done a good job of it. And against this zone, Maryland has been very careless with the ball. Need to be stronger with it, make a pass fake, and deliver it. Again, almost another steal. And there is another one. Wallace Kowski comes up with the loose ball. Trying to force it, not going side to side. Arrington loves to run. He and Cummings can really get out. And the Seminoles with a chance to take the lead. And boost it. They're up 7-6. There's a high low. Wallace Kowski. Nice dish and Nigel Dixon missed the slam. Well, he can't execute much better than that. Just didn't finish it off. Blake, good dish to Baxter. Got it. Nigel Dixon is going to be very disappointed. The Seminoles hitting two-thirds of their shot early. High low stack. Screen across, screen for the screen. And there is a moving screen called on Wallace Kowski. That'll be his first. Got a timeout, 15.46 to go. First half, Terps by one over Florida State. airlines when you stay at any choice hotel in the u.s and the caribbean and you'll also get the chance to enter our two million mile giveaway one lucky traveler will win one million miles and ten people will win one hundred thousand miles sounds like it's a good time to hit the road for reservations call 1-800-4-CHOICE at michelin our tires are rigorously tested they're laser checked x-rayed for structural integrity and finally no tire leaves the factory without a thorough hand inspection Michelin, because 
so much as riding on your tires. It's early in the first ACC quarterfinal. Maryland with a one-point lead over Florida State. And certainly Maryland dominated the season series between these teams as Juan Dixon averaged 25 points a game. Eight boards and five and a half steals as the Seminoles turned it over a lot and shot very poorly from three-point range. Only five of 27. That's 19 percent. And that won't get it done against the Terps. Well, they got the start they wanted. Uh, the start they wanted in this particular game. Maryland has been a little bit. I would. I don't want to say confused by the zone. This two-three zone that Florida State has put on, but they've not handled it very well. They've tried to force some passes into the middle. They've turned it over three times, and Florida State has taken advantage of it. And really, those turnovers have led to some easy opportunities for Florida State. Would you say lack of intensity on Maryland's part would be fair? I'm not sure it's lack of intensity as much as it is lack of concentration on the offensive end. I think Maryland knows they're su the superior team. And they are going to be able to get the shots they want if they are patient. But they have been impatient and haven't moved the ball side to side. When you see a zone, you've got to punish that zone by moving the ball because they cannot cover everything in the zone. Blake's been able to penetrate a couple of times, but it hasn't led to much. Now they're going to one of their man sets to try to call something. Blake second in the country assist. Dixon long three and got it. Ron Dixon is so aggressive offensively. He's always looking to exploit his opponent no matter which end of the floor he's on. He's you can really notice it defensively with all the steals he gets the great anticipation but he looks to score as well jd bracy a sophomore is in the ball game for the first time antoine hickson trying to get it low that was tipped away by mouton who's an underrated defensive player and mouton at the other end from blake well how about that not only the pass by blake but what a great job by mouton after getting the deflection running the floor mouton seems to be the wild card for this team when he gets points and when he plays well, they're virtually unbeatable. Well, his last 10 games, he's averaging over 15 points per, per game. He's been going to the glass. He's really been a solid addition this season at the three spot. Dixon all over Bracey. Bracey with a little scoop, can't hit it. Offensive rebound, Harvey with a miss. Harvey a good rebounder, but doesn't give you a whole lot on the other end. Dixon again. And Mouton somehow got a fingertip on it and put it in. Well, I think Antoine Dixon was the one that got the fingertip on it, but Mouton very wisely put his hand up afterward. He took the credit in a hurry, didn't he? Give that scorer's table a little help. Steve Blake does such a nice job of passing ahead. As soon as he gets the outlet, he is immediately looking for somebody ahead. Now, watch this tip in here. I'm pretty sure that was Dixon tipping You're right in, and it was. But look at the credit. <laughs> Closest guy gets the point. He knows it, too. 9 nothing Maryland run to go up 15-7. How impressive, Mike, is this Maryland team? This is the deepest team I've ever seen Gary Williams have. And sometimes people talk about depth, and it just means you've got some guys give you a couple minutes here, a couple minutes there. they got nine players who can play at this level. And one of the guys, Drew Nicholas, has really improved to become sure him. such a valuable contributor. He could start at a number of different places in this league. And you take a look at all the minutes. Juan Dixon going to have to play a lot of minutes. Steve Blake, you always want those two on the floor if you can. But when they, get, when they go to the bench, they can bring Taj Holden in, who's very skilled. Can, Shoot the ball, Ryan Randall, a strong rebounder, junior college transfer. So they've got some players, if they do get in foul trouble or get tired, they can come in and give you quality minutes. 15-7, Harrington being dogged by Blake. This is Anthony Richardson, very athletic freshman. So how about the help side defense for Dixon? Dixon, one of the great thieves in the history of the ACC, a little off balance on that. Blake, what a tip by Blake! That is your point guard. You have to imagine that Steve Blake came into this game with a little bit of an attitude. I think he got overlooked in the All-ACC voting as well. I think he's a little bit better than 13. How can you be second in the nation in assists, first in the ACC in assists, and be voted the third team ACC? Here's the missed shot going off the board. What a great play, one-handed by Steve Blake. Long arms. He really does a great job defensively. Everybody talks about the assists, and they should. Over his last five or six ball games, he's averaging over 11 assists per game. 
And he gets so many assists, not only from guys like Dixon, but he, he, he makes the pass oftentimes that leads to an assist by someone else. Mouton, good kick out. Blake averages less than eight points a game. I will bet you next year when Dixon is gone, he'll be up around the 15 level. He certainly can score. Boy, tough lean-in shot. Mouton drains another one, and it's 19-7. The run and jump. Cummings, good catch. The run is now reached 13-0. Triple team with a miss, and that's tipped in. Harvey says he got it. Nigel Dixon was also there. Maryland went so aggressively after that shot block that they opened up the offensive glass on the weak side. You got to rotate down and get a body on someone, but it's difficult to do. Still the 2 3 zone for Florida State. Dixon short on the jumper. Long rebound comes out to the Seminole. Cummings was flying at him. That was one to shot fake and go by. Surprised they haven't been able to get the ball to Nigel Dixon more right now. He's being fronted by Taj Holden. Joiner into the ball game. He misses. Nigel with the offensive rebound. Backs in offensive foul. Well, give credit to Taj Holden for doing a good job there, but I think that was a little bit of a flop. And that's where Nigel Dixon's size and strength can work against him a little bit. Take a look at the shot, the offensive rebound. He's really pushed away here by Taj Holden. But watch this. Watch Holden. Now, Holden goes down. That wasn't enough to knock him over. It might knock you and me over. It killed me. Time stronger enough. <laughs> Put me in the hospital. The Seminoles have turned it over seven times in the first eight minutes. Much more patient. Maryland's offensive attack since that timeout by Gary Williams. Drew Nicholas is also in the ball game. Good ball movement by Wilcox. And Holden, who's a good long-range shooter. Dixon nearly tipped that in. And this is Marcel Haywood in for Steve Robinson. Seminoles have used virtually their entire bench in the first eight minutes of the game. Richardson off balance and fouled by Wilcox. Florida State run a little set when it came to the weak side. Richardson, when he catches it, he was ready to shoot and make a move. He's going to be a really good player. McDonald's All-American. A tremendous athlete as he learns the game and gets a little bit stronger. A solid ACC contributor. Got a Raleigh, North Carolina. Makes the first. This team is not a good free throw shooting team. There are some guys uh, absolutely brutal from the line, as we saw last night. It was a miss fest between them and Clemson from the line. Well, they missed 21 free throws. Still were able to win the ballgame. Richardson looked good, hits both. Maryland with the early lead, 11.33 to go, first half from the ACC. They say if you're going to sell something, get yourself a captive audience. Oh, watch the sleeve. Okay, there you go. This place is going to be a gold mine. Well, I'm not picking that up. When you bring the seven up, everyone is your friend. Yeah. Okay, that's enough being friends. I would like a different partner. Can you imagine me and a Wesley Snipes tight? Robert De Niro. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Eddie Murphy. Don't say it. Showtime. 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 Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, March 15th. Uh, yeah. Psst, Howie, don't miss the big wireless sale at Radio Shack. That's where I heard Terry. Yes, Howie, you clearly heard Terry. Now get a clear digital Sprint PCS phone by Samsung. The N200 is just $99.99 after a $50 Sprint PCS mail-in rebate. Then save another $50 only at Radio Shack. Get 4,000 clear wireless minutes for only $39.99 a month. I just love it when I get into his head. Howie! The Sprint Store at Radio Shack. Totally new Nissan Altima. Out in the Big Ten here on Championship Week, quarterfinals Michigan State and Indiana. A.J. Moy to Jeff Newton. Glides down, drops it in. Indiana up by nine. Mike and Jay. 
All right, thank you very much. Maryland on top by eight here, 11-33, and Steve Blake leading the way, Jay. Steve Blake, one of the most underrated point guards, not only in this league, but in the country. Tough-minded, resilient, and a brilliant passer. The dish off, then looking ahead on the break, and he is a good rebounder, but usually a defensive rebounder. This time, the one-handed offensive putback, and you can see Steve Blake, his year-by-year -year assist totals, 217 would be a great career. And that was what he got as a freshman, just under 700 assists for his career, the all-time leader at the University of Maryland. And he will have a chance to join Hurley, Corciani, and Coda at the top of the NCAA and ACC stats by the end of his career next year. Has a shot at 1,000. Certainly the way he has played later, uh, coming from second place to overtake Edward Scott of Clemson for the ACC lead, you'd think he'd get that 1,000 next year. Drew Nicholas, Jay, you mentioned him. He has made dramatic improvement. He gives them the perfect third guard because he can play either spot and play it well. Exactly. Good combo guard off the bench. He's really improved his handle. A much better ball handler this season. Ryan Randall with a miss. Loose ball picked up by Richardson. Seminoles down by only eight as we approach the 11-minute mark. And Marcel Haywood from Queens College in the ball game. But Ryan Randall got caught trying to break contact and get around in front. Randall picks up his first. Mike Patrick, Jay Billis, our entire ESPN crew with you from Charlotte, North Carolina, opening game of the quarterfinals at the ACC. Florida State, a team that survived by beating Clemson in overtime last night against the number one seed, the nation's number two team, Terps of Maryland. Nice feed to Dixon, and Juan Dixon reached in and picks up his first person. Now when Nigel goes to the free throw line, last year he was absolutely hideous. Watch the replay. Well, good job by Joyner to take the ball into the middle of that defense. And this Florida State team, a very good driving team. That's why there's got to be not only weak side help, but a rotation down. Otherwise, they're going to get layups. Watch the rotation on this free throw. This thing is a rainbow. Last year, he didn't have any rotation. So from that standpoint, he certainly improved. He lost nearly 100 pounds from last year. Well, look at the ball in his hands. It looks like a grapefruit. Three out of ten last night. That one was perfect. And Nigel Dixon has become a factor for the Seminoles. Uh, first couple of years, more of a curiosity than anything else. But you have to give him credit for working that hard. He lost a small child. 100 pounds. Of, you got you to change your vocabulary with him in the game. A coach can never say, Nigel, you got to be hungry out there. <laughs> no, that could be very dangerous. When you go to the buffet, you better not tell them that either. <laughs> The ConAgra Foods Big East Championship is down to the Final Four. Tonight, ESPN's exclusive coverage of the semifinals pit Miami, UConn, and Notre Dame. It will be interesting to see how some of the quote-unquote bubble teams from the Big East are treated by the committee. I'm not sure some of them did enough. Blake really forced that one and didn't get it. Well, there was shot clock was down off that out-of-bounds underneath, and nobody really realized it. He ended up seeing it was maybe a second and a half to go and just had a launch coming short on his jumper good hustle to get the rebound trapped underneath Nigel Dixon Holden got a piece of that Nicholas ahead of the pack on oh, nice pass inside but Randall travel or an offensive foul no well, they got Joyner underneath just didn't get there in time well, this Maryland team gets the ball up the floor so quickly. Every time Steve Blake gets it, he looks ahead. And you can see just jumping and didn't quite get there in time. That might have been a good no call. I would agree with that. So would Steve Robinson. <laughs> and off the inbounds, Randall, perfect position inside. That's a no-no for the Seminole defense. And they're down by nine. Well, you know what? They gave up a layup anyway, so everybody's happy. Except Steve Robinson. Cummings looking for a screen, then they leave him alone. Goes baseline and got the roll. So strong on the drive. He really gave up a 15-foot jumper wide open after that high ball screen, but decided to turn the corner and drive anyway. 
31-14. Maryland really not getting any separation. Nicholas with a long three. Nigel Dixon with a rebound. Outlet to Arrington. Florida State doing a pretty good job of making Maryland guard every time down. Get into a set here. Double stack low. Arrington will try to do it on his own. Nigel Dixon got away with a push-up. Got the rebound. Got it to Richardson. He's blocked. And a great job by Ryan Randall. Blocked that flat-footed. Dixon with a miss. Rich or Mouton with a miss. And Richardson with a rebound for the Seminole. Maryland just looks a little flat. Well, they've been settling for jump shots a lot. Reach in by Dixon. Stepped on the sideline. Out of bounds. Carl Hess makes the call. Working this game with Ray Natilli and Jamie Lucky. Anytime you play against a zone defense, Mike, it is so easy just to settle for a jump shot. Those are the shots that are most available, but you have got to be patient and get the ball inside, and that will collapse that defense. If you don't get something from the pass inside, you can get a kick out and an even better jump shot. And I think that's what Gary Williams wants to see from his team. A little more patience, try to get the ball down into the paint. Wallace Kowski, Gracie, and Harvey are back in for Florida State, as well as Antoine Dixon. Steve Robinson throwing the whole arsenal at them in the first half. Gracie, got a good long-range shooting team. Hey, Maryland's doing a pretty good job defensively, communicating on the screens, but offensively they have not been efficient. Nicholas says they settle down and run it again. 7.56 to go, first half, seven-point lead. Dixon, good fake to get inside, hits the runner. And Mike, that was all made possible by getting the ball into Lonnie Baxter. That collapsed the defense a little bit, made them close out to Dixon. A nice shot fake, put it on the floor, and an easy shot. Only their second basket in five and a half minutes. Harrington almost lost it. The all-time Seminole assist leader. If he'd gotten by, he would have seen Chris Wilcox and Lonnie Baxter. Dixon really a gambler on defense. Went for the steal there, and Bracey did him a favor by crashing into the rest of the Maryland defense. Baxter had position. Foul on J.D. Bracey. 7.26 to go first half. Terps by nine. Yesterday, Marcus Barnes led his team into the semifinals with 27 points. Tonight, the Hurricanes face top-ranked Pitt. The Huskies squeaked past Villanova and now tip off against the Fighting Irish. Championship Week presented by 7-Up. Semifinal action tonight. If he throws an elbow, you hit him in the mouth! Brian Dennehy is Bobby Knight. What the hell are you scared of? A season on the brink. Premiere Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. This month on DirecTV Customer News, we're unwrapping some great new packages. Special entertainment packages with something for everyone in your family. Plus, we'll give you tips on how to get the most out of your DirecTV system, and we'll take a tour of our great new website. See what channels are included in each package, upgrade, or compare prices on DirecTV.com. Just tune to Channel 201 for DirecTV Customer News. See you there. 324 Division I college basketball teams start the season with one goal in mind, reach the tournament. They fight the odds, they beat the clock. Favorites stumble, underdogs emerge. 64 make it to Mega March Madness. 32 survive to the weekend. Only the best reach the Sweet 16. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of the tournament with Mega March Madness. For just $49, you'll get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. Let the madness begin. Yeah, I need two. We see it all the time. Good luck, pal. How you doing? <laughs> Maybe the team that loses this game will have two for you. The rest of the brackets, Virginia and C State coming up, the compelling matchup in the first round. And North Carolina and Duke, it looks a little odd to see them in the first round. Georgia Tech and Wake will finish out tonight. And David Thompson, the legend from North Carolina State. Muggsy Bogues is there with him out of Wake Forest. It's uh, like old home week for most of us here. You get to see people you don't see at any other time in the year. And look at David flying his colors there. 
Arguably one of the, uh, not one of, arguably the greatest player in ACC yes. history. Arguably the greatest forward who ever played college basketball. Turnovers, Seminoles, 10 times in 12 and a half minutes. You can't do that against Maryland because they make you pay. I've still never seen anyone who could jump like Thompson. And Wilcox let that one go over his head. Speaking of a guy who can jump. Yes. Well, you talk about Chris Wilcox these days, and all you hear is the word upside. And he has a lot of it. When he learns how to play this game, and he is still learning, you're talking about one great basketball player. He already has the spectacular stuff down. And, he's, and he really is learning how to play the low post. His jump hook has really improved. He's actually shooting it almost down at the basket. He gets up so high. Arrington over Nicholas. A lot of good hustle inside by Antoine Dixon. You know, Lonnie Baxter did not come up with that ball, but he has got great hands. He just stuck out that big left mitt and pulled that thing back. I didn't think there was any way he could pull that in. 6.54 to go first half. Maryland's done a nice job of getting through screens. Arrington, tough shot. Follow won't go, but a foul, and they're pointing at Baxter. Harvey thought he had it. Looked like Nicholas got him in the back. It will go on Drew Nicholas, his first. It's always a, uh, always a good tactic is when you've uh, given up inside position. When the guy jumps, just give him a little shove right in the small of the back, and they tend to go further that way. <laughs> little tricks you learn? Yeah, after having it done to you enough times, you can learn how to do it. And most of the time, guys get away with that one, too. Exactly, because it doesn't look like much of a foul. Just when Nigel Dixon does it, guys usually end up in the cheap seats. <laughs> a little push from him is a little stronger than most. 23-16, Seminoles back within seven. And Florida State sticking with his 2-3 zone. Baxter. I'll tell you, when you're playing against Maryland, you've got to keep your hands up if you're going to play zone against them. Florida State playing that zone, one to conserve some energy so they don't have to run and chase around guys like Juan Dixon and Steve Blake, but also because they want to try to get Maryland to stand around a bit. Cummings and Arrington trying to carry the load, and Arrington knocks down the three. Token pressure bringing the ball up, and they'll drop back in that 2-3. Now the hands up by Wallace Kowski trying to discourage the pass inside. White. Nicholas looks back inside. Wilcox, who is a really good passer to Baxter and Baxter's foul. Delvon Arrington, the nice penetration by Monty Cummings. And that penetration, even though it was just into the middle of the lane, enough to pull that defense toward Cummings and provide Arrington that extra bit of time he needs to get a shot off. And Arrington does need a little bit of time to see the jump shot. Baxter at the line for the first Maryland free throw of the ball game. And Baxter hits the first. The Terps started horribly this year from the free throw line. But they have really improved. Moved up to fourth in the conference in free throw shoes. They shot 73% from the line in ACC games. But really the problem were the two big guys early in the year, Chris Wilcox and Lonnie Baxter. They didn't shoot well at all from the free throw line. And that dragged the overall numbers down. Cummings trapped and got a timeout. Maryland sprung the full court press on them and surprised the Seminoles, so they have to burn the 30 to keep possession of the ball. A little 1-2-1-1 one, one, one full court pressure. And with a little uh, trap on the first pass. And with Chris Wilcox on the ball, not only is it difficult to get that ball in, but he goes and traps that pass. A great athlete with tremendous size difficult to see around him it's the time of the year where everybody wants to talk about the ncaa tournament who's in who's out Let's take a look at some of the teams that are already guaranteed to go and of course it is still up in the air for a couple of members of the atlantic coast conference any surprises here for you well a couple surprises but what i see are a lot of teams that can beat you not only gonzaga who's the best team on that group but Western Kentucky behind Chris Marcus and David Boyden. You're talking about a team there that can win a first-round game maybe even further. And watch out for Creighton also. Kyle Carver, an outstanding shooter. Dana Altman's done a great job with that team. UNC Wilmington has Brett Blizzard. 
an outstanding perimeter shooter, and Winthrop, who may be in the playing game. I don't think they've got a chance to win a first-round game, but Greg Marshall, one of the outstanding young coaches in the game, he will get a look when some major colleges open up their coaching positions at the end of the year. Well, you may not have a chance to win, but you have to get there first. No question about it. And that's really the great thing about the NCAA tournament is teams from smaller conferences getting to the tournament is like a major school getting to the Final Four. And that's one of the great things to watch the excitement of those kids as they get to lace it up against the number one seed and something they'll remember the rest of their lives. Mouton picked up that last foul. It was the sixth team foul. Gary Williams decided to turn up the heat with the pressure, trying not only to affect Florida State, but maybe get his team more into it. That's right. Pick them up a bit. Harrington now being guarded by Mouton. Not the shot. Wilcox thought about the length of the court pass, then gets it up to Blake. Juan Dixon, great a nice dish, and back to the jam. How about that attacking mentality from Juan Dixon? Catches the ball, immediately puts it on the floor and draws the defense. Full court man here. Harrington, good decision to come back outside. He didn't have a good match. Then goes back in, and Wilcox with a rebound. To Juan Dixon, first one run, three on three. Blake, nice oh. dish. Wilcox with a miss, and Wilcox with a tip, and Mouton with a tip. I think Wilcox is wondering if he can get an assist off that. No. <laughs> God, I wish I could miss the dunk like that. He looks a little sheepish right now. He does go for velocity. He is what I would call a power dunker. No whistle, Mouton, Wallacekowski called for the contact. That'll be his first. And Steve Robinson just got a technical foul, it looks like. Here's Baxter going up for the dunk, and here was a play by Monty Cummings. He got fouled here. That's a foul. That is body contact down low. He should be shooting two free throws. And Steve Robinson let Carl Hess know about it, and he's still talking about it. And he has, I think, every right to complain. That was just a missed call, simple, pure and simple. It happens to everybody. What he was yelling at the officials, call it the same way at both ends, but picks up the technical. And Juan Dixon, who is money at the line, will go to the strike. One thing you've got to say about Steve Robinson, all the pressure he is under in his fifth year. Coming down the stretch, Michael Joyner, one of his uh, better players, was suspended for the Maryland game. Didn't start last night because of violation of team rules. Now, here is a guy who desperately needs victories, but he stood by his principles and did what he thought was right over having a better chance to win games. You certainly have to salute that. And his kids have done a great job in the classroom this year. You have to salute that. That, all that said, is that enough? Well, you know, this is fifth year, and he took over at a very difficult time in this Florida State program's history, and he has done everything that Dave Hart asked of him. He's essentially cleaned up the academics in that program and put to, uh, his kids back in the classroom. They have done a good job there. I think he's done a good job growing the program. The problem is you have not seen in this league a, the requisite number of wins to make you feel comfortable. And will he wind up being a guy like Les Robinson in North Carolina State who wound up being, in my opinion, a sacrificial lamb for the Wolfpack and got that program back on track so that Herb Sendak could take it to the next level? You wonder. I, I think Steve Robinson is a very good coach. I watched him at Tulsa. I watched him before when he was an assistant at Kansas. We're talking about a solid basketball coach. Will he continue to get the chance? That's hard to say. And you've got to remember, for those not familiar with Florida State, when he took it over, it was a mess. Antoine Dixon, probably their best long-range shooter, got around the screen and knocked it down. Florida State extending this zone a little bit, trying to put some token pressure on and drop back in the tandem 2-3. One of the problems for Dixon, that was his first shot of the ball game. Not very easy for him to get his own shot. Lonnie Baxter can't hit it, fighting for the rebound, and that was Haywood coming out. Boy, did they go after the ball. Mouton kept it alive, and then Baxter was right there. You see Dixon in a nice move by Haywood. Not to have the ball taken from him. Now, Dixon is such an unusual defender. Not only does he put good pressure on the ball, but once he, his man gives it up, he doesn't necessarily guard his man. He plays kind of a rover, and he's all over the place. 
Shot clock down to 10, and they're not in their offense yet. Dixon with a miss. Shot clock is at 6. Dixon forced to shoot the 3. Mouton with a rebound and takes a forearm across the face. Juan Dixon just about single-handedly yes, got Florida State a shot clock violation. Yep. What a defensive exchange by one of the best players I think you'll ever see in this conference's history. You see Juan Dixon, look at his eyes, and he's always moving his feet. Great hands, knocks that ball away, and an All-American who's not afraid to get on the floor and go after it. Didn't come up with it, but that is great hustle. He has been nominated for the V Foundation Comeback Award. There are seven finalists. He's one of them. And uh, Dixon has overcome so much in his life. The death of both parents when he was just a young man from drug abuse and uh, AIDS involved in that. And Juan Dixon has become an exemplary young man from the University of Maryland. Great player, great person. Mouton now 14 points and four boards. Big first half for Mouton, turf 515. Make it a call. Don't get burned by a high rate. Get Minute Pass. With Minute Pass, I know I get cheap rates because I buy my minutes up front. Just pick the size that's right for you with rates as low as six cents a minute. Home or away, Minute Pass as you come. With my Minute Pass, it's eight cents a minute wherever I use it. And my minutes never expire. And you can add more minutes for less. When I need more minutes, I just recharge my Minute Pass and get bonus minutes every time. Heading out, get Minute Pass. Buy one today. Just call 1-800-777-5000 or visit MinutePass.com. Minute Pass, your pass to a great low rate. When reviewing the Lexus LS 430, Automobile Magazine said, no car in this class has more inviting leather, a more comfortable ride, a superior stereo, or a more logical navigation system. Perhaps this is why, for the second year in a row, Automobile Magazine has named the LS430 the best luxury car over $40,000. To its owners, it's the best luxury sedan in the world. The LS430, at your Lexus dealer. Player of the year this year in the Big Ten, Jared Jeffries shows a reason why. He can do it outside, does it inside as well, posts up. A little fake with the ball, turns in the paint, plus the foul. Mike and Jay. John, thank you very much. Our favorite time of the year, and Maryland in the first quarterfinal game here in the ACC, leading by 15. Pretty much what you would expect, the Terps shooting nearly 50%. Seminoles under 30, they've turned it over 10 times. Antoine Dixon, nine points on three of eight shooting. And Arrington, five points after a career-high 24 last night, Jay. And a career-high 44 minutes, so his legs with the short turnaround time might be an issue. But the, dif the difference in this ball game has been Juan Dixon and the defense that has been played by this Maryland team, led by Juan Dixon. Dixon has been all over the place defensively. Arrington off the miss. And then Arrington taking the ball in again. Once you get past that initial line of defense, you've got Lonnie Baxter, Chris Wilcox at times, Taj Holden back there to block shots. And Arrington right now on the bench taking a well-deserved rest after playing so many minutes last night against Clemson. He had a terrific game, 24 points, six assists, six rebounds. Just get the feeling that Arrington and Cummings feel the pressure of the world on their shoulders in this game. They know they're the veterans, they're the big scorers. The guys who need to get it done if this team's going to have a chance as Juan Dixon picks up his second match. And they're the targets. They're the first two guys on the scouting report that every team is trying to stop, especially Arrington, because he does get this team going, and you're going to see people trap him, press him, try to get him to give the ball up, make somebody else handle it, and that's a big responsibility. I thought this was a very good coaching move by Steve Robinson. We mentioned a couple of times he has gone deep into his bench several times in the first half, going back to what you said about the 44 minutes last night. He could play his starters most of the time in the first half and maybe keep it close.
but he'd get killed in the second half. Right. If you want a chance to win, you've got to try to sub early to keep them fresh so they can make a run. The problem is when you get down early, you have to stay competitive and stay close. Otherwise, they can get away from you in a hurry against a team that can put a spurt on you in a hurry. Well, they sure can. Harvey has hit four for four from the free throw line to cut it back to 13 points, the 224 mark. Florida State sticking with this 2-3 zone. Maryland is an extremely unselfish team. Got a lot of guys that can score, but they don't need to score. Nicholas in and out. Moton. Another rebound for Moton. Short on the jumper. And Harvey may have knocked that out of bounds. And then Moton grabs Carl Hess by the shoulder and said he was fouled. May have said something else. In, or not Carl Hess, but teed him up. You just can't grab a referee and spin him around. Well, plus, there's nothing to be gained by saying anything. Talking to the referees, it's a coach's job. And Byron Mouton is a terrific player and really a terrific kid. But that is something that you have to avoid. Not only is it two free throws on the other end for Florida State, but it's a personal foul on Byron Mouton. Doesn't need that. Gary Williams questioning the call, but, uh, well, yeah, if he saw it, an angle. Yeah, if he saw it, he wouldn't question Yeah. And that, that's one thing where the referee should probably go over to Gary and tell him exactly what happened. But he thought he got fouled and wanted to say something immediately to the official, and the official didn't like it. There's some people you can't touch, and they're one of them. Exactly. Right line rule. Coming up on the 7-Up Halftime Report, John Saunders from Digger Phelps. And we'll have our bracket bonanza and UVA's bubble problems, and certainly they have that coming in here to the ACC tournament. Harvey got his hands on it, couldn't hold it. Seminoles on the run, Arrington, nice spin draws the foul. Well, Arrington can really move the ball up and down the court quickly, even off the dribble. Very speedy with the ball in his hands as assistant coach Jimmy Patsos uh, talks to Byron Mouton. You see Florida State pushing the ball up the court. From end to end, I'm not sure there's a quicker point guard with the ball in his hands than Delvon Arrington. Tell you what, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to halftime to hearing what Digger has to say about his uh, his old disciple, Pete Gillen. Gillen was an assistant, the head coach of the team, an assistant to Digger at Notre Dame and learned all the tricks about tight rims and <laughs> getting those nets as tight as possible to slow down a transition team, practicing with the same ball your opponent uses. Taking a cue from the way they played football at Notre Dame. Let the grass grow up to about your knees. <laughs> That'll slow them down. 37-27. Seminoles within 10. Calvin McCall is in for the first time. He's just drifted inside the basket. Back to Blake. He sometimes will go an entire half without looking for a shot. Got to put the ball on the floor and get into the scenes of this zone. Shot clock at 10. Blake does exactly that and threw it past Wilcox. Now, Maryland has not attacked this zone very well at all. You can see Mouton with 14 points, Dixon with 9. But they really need to do a better job of attacking this zone. I think there are better things for them than some of the shots they've been settling for. It's an important time right here in the last 120. And the Seminoles hit a couple of shots and realistically get back into the ballgame. That's why end of half situations are so important. A lot of people talk about end of game. End of half oftentimes is one of the most important times of the game. Michael Joyner, good baseline drive and almost threw it away. Shot clock down to 11. They got away with the walk. The switch pivot feet, nobody saw it. Harrington down the lane. That one's tipped out of bounds with only five on the clock. Had a shot clock violation earlier. Joiner, long three, rainbow. Nicholas with a rebound. Maryland's guards are good rebound. Well, they sent all five guys to the defensive boards. Blake out of the corner. Boy, got Offensive like rebound in McCall. Nobody rotated back. That would have been a layup if that ball had bounced another foot outside. Three second difference between the game clock and the shot clock, so the Terps can burn most of it if they choose. And still have time for a tip. Blake will try a three and hit it. Steve Blake, who started the year shooting very, very poorly, hits that one in Maryland. Two out of 11 from long range. 
Arrington and stripped from behind, but the foul on Nichols. That sounded like a lot of leather from here. Blake unable to get over that screen and stay in front. Difficult thing to do. But this looked like all leather to me. Difficult to see. Yeah, there's nothing, that's nothing but leather right there. But you know what? It happens so fast, it looks like a foul. You gotta blow the whistle. Blake reached in and he'll get the personal. Delvon Arrington played an awful lot of minutes last night against Clemson. And it is so difficult to get any rest, any sleep after a late game because it's hard to wind down and they got to turn around and basically wake up and play. The lead is 12. Gracie comes in for defense. Trying to get it into Blake, fronting him. Blake gets it anyway. Blake tries to dish it inside the back. He tipped out the 2.1 and tipped out to Florida State. Oh, you don't want to do that. Taking a real chance in contact and backcourt. No whistle. And then the three planks off the glass. So the Seminoles have kept it reasonably close. They're within a dozen at the half. 40 to 28. That's the story from the ACC. Back to John Saunders in the studio. Alongside of Digger Phelps, a 12-point game at halftime. Florida State keeping it respectable, but part of the reason is Maryland's offense has not looked that good. Two of 11 from three-point range. The reason why, because Florida State comes out and plays a little zone defense. They don't want to get in a running game playing last night. They're a little tired. you got to play at noon. So start the game of 2-3 zone, test the threes. It's worked. But as you're going to see, the rebounding strength as well as the running game favors Maryland. Just blow this thing out in the second half. Today is one of the best days of the entire season in college basketball. All the tournaments under way in the big conferences including the Big Ten. Indiana and Michigan State matching up. We'll come back with that and plenty more. When reviewing the Lexus LS 430, Automobile Magazine said, no car in this class has more inviting leather, a more comfortable ride, a superior stereo, or a more logical navigation system. Perhaps this is why, for the second year in a row, Automobile Magazine has named the LS430 the best luxury car over $40,000. To its owners, it's the best luxury sedan in the world. The LS430, at your Lexus dealer. Checking out digital cameras? Uh, yeah, I need FireWire compatibility so that I can email my pictures. Sure. This one also makes MPEG movies. Really? Oh. He's excited. It's for our baby. Congratulations. <laughs> Considered any names yet? Uh, yeah, maybe Sony or Olympus, but uh, you're the expert, right? <laughs> we know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City. We're with you. How about an LCD screen? Uh, LCD, chicken pox. We're going to screen for everything. <laughs> That's a foul, player. Hey, what? Hey, get out of here, man. That's the hack. My man got three signature moves. Hacking, hacking, and hacking. Whatever, though. If you quit, that fool ain't hard to shake. And, yo, it didn't even matter that there wasn't a ref, because I had these, the Nike Air Flight Elevates. You can't hack what you can't catch, right? You can only get them at Foot Locker. They asked me how I knew my true love was true. Star Warrior, 102 cubic inches of raw burning love. Smoke gets in your eyes. My life has never been more demanding. And to help keep my mind and body active, there's Centrum Performance. It's a complete multi with higher levels of bees plus ginkgo and ginseng to help re-energize my mind and body. Centrum Performance. Life demands it. I do all her copying, faxing, and printing, and she barely says hi. Jim takes my copies to her desk, and now they're sushi buddies. Oh, super. Toshiba copiers make you look good. This halftime report is presented by 7-Up and your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. Maryland has a 12-point lead at halftime over Florida State. John Saunders alongside of Digger Phelps. Let's turn our attention now to the Big Ten. And 
there. Michigan State knows what it is to be a champion. They won the last four regular season championships until this year. So perhaps a chance to get it done in the tournament. But facing Indiana today, ranked number 22, and Hoosiers have had a real good season. Moy with the dish to Jeff Newton. He finishes for two. Indiana at a 10-point lead. Moy again pulls up, leans back. Jumper is good, rattles around. Indiana at a nine-point lead at halftime. Chris Hill then goes to the hoop. Chris Hill makes a nice move to basket. Good pass inside. Offensive rebound. And Gagne making it happen. Chris Hill knows where to get the baskets. But Jared Jeffries, no answer for the player of the year in the Big Ten. He gets fouled as well. Still a 10-point lead. And Jeffries, if you like it the first time, gets his man pinned, sealed, turns, and scores. Had a quiet first half. One for five, even though the Hoosiers had a nine-point lead at halftime. Building it up now, 58-45. I just feel Marcus Taylor's got to get some other people scoring for him. They in problems. This, this is a team that you look for for the future of Michigan State. As you take a look at the Big Ten bracket, Wisconsin and Iowa. Iowa, a very disappointing team this year, but you figure they got a shot against Wisconsin today. Well, I, when you look at what Iowa did last night, it's finally Wrecker and Evans, especially Evans. 18 rebounds, which means now he's the enforcer in the paint, wrecker on the perimeter. They've got to play the way through. Steve Alford knows this. They've got to win the conference tournament in order to get an NCAA bid because they had a total collapse in the month of February. They did beat Wisconsin this year. They actually split. Illinois, this is a team that, again, with Iowa, is probably one of the big disappointments in the Big Ten. But again, Now's the time when everything can get healthy with a little run in the tournament. They can get a run, but they're going to have a tough game against Minnesota. Minnesota had that game won over the weekend, and that was really sad. A 10-0 run by Illinois. Minnesota, too many turnovers at the end, especially the one where Frank Williams steals it, goes in and scores at the buzzer. They know today they're fired up to get a payback game, but I love Illinois. Bill Self finally has his team playing well together. Even Corey Bradford getting 19 points in the Minnesota went on the road, gives them that balance and even the perimeter to go with Robert Archibald and Brian Cook beating people up in the paint. And you're right, that last game so important because in the previous game, Illinois beat them by 23 points. So the fact that they got it down to one, now meet them in the tournament is a big, big help. Move to the ACC. Of course, we're watching a game in the ACC right now between Florida State and Maryland. NC State, Virginia, Wake Forest and Georgia Tech and Duke against North Carolina. And NC State, Virginia is the one that we'll point at because Virginia is not in this thing. And I actually think they have to win a couple of games despite the fact that they had a win against Duke in the last week of the season. Well, I think the fact that they beat Duke was a big win. They needed somebody last week to step up and get it done. They got it done against Duke. But the other side of it is this. Virginia in the ACC, when you look at conference strength, it's, it's the second best conference in the country to me. And that means even though there's nine teams, you don't have a chance to play like other conferences that have 12 teams and get another three or four wins to build up your resume. That's what's hurt the Virginia team in the ACC. But if they win today against NC State, it's a lock. If they lose, I still think they're in, but it puts them on a bubble, and a lot will depend on what goes on in a lot of the other conferences, especially the mid-majors. They want, like Kent, to win the Mid-American, because then you got a battle to see will they get two in in the Mid-American. So Pete Gillen can coach. He'll get it done. Peter, just beat them today and end it. Let's end this speculation. You're in anyhow. Just remember all the things that Digger Phelps told you when you're sitting on the bench right next to him. Move to the Big East now, and the game's being played tonight. Interesting note in the Big East, this is the first time in the 22-year history of this conference that neither Georgetown or Syracuse have reached the semifinals. That's telling something. UConn is there, and UConn is the team of the 90s in the Big East, and Ben Gordon has been a big part of that. Ben Gordon really yesterday took this game over under pressure when they had to get it done. His penetration in the paint has been solid. He's done a great job finding points when he needs them, but the big three that he hit yesterday to me was a difference. Notre Dame. Wow. Chris Thomas's leadership and Ryan Humphrey in the paint. What a combination. Inside, outside. Humphrey's going to be tough to stop. He's played very, very solid, getting double doubles. And it's, I think his battle against Okafor tonight is the key. If Okafor gets in foul trouble, that hurts Connecticut's perimeter defense. And that's where they've been proved because they're able to run the break with him getting rebounds. The bracket, Pitt and Miami. Miami, very solid team. But Pittsburgh with Brandon Knight, he's the leader. But Marcus Barnes coming off 27 points was a big win over Georgetown. I just love what that game's going to be. Here's the question mark. We we'll put these teams on the bubble. St. John's getting knocked out last night as well. Of these teams you're looking right now, first of all, how many can the Big East get? I think my consensus is that it's five. Some feel they could get as many as six. If it is six, all those teams in play. 
Well, I, I don't think they're going to get six. I really think the other conferences have the strength to do it. And when you see, like, Southern Illinois in the Missouri Valley, they're going. They've won uh, 20 games on neutral courts or on the road. They're 13 and 7. That impresses me. They beat Indiana. They did a great job already, Southern Illinois, knocking out what you're seeing, Murray State, who's in, and University of Chicago, Illinois. But the fact is this I think St. John's, because they're 6 and 4, the way they can play, Boston College is in a slump. Troy Bell is tower, tired. They're 5-5 five and five, their last 10 games. I give the edge right now to St. John's being a fifth team, and the Big East is only going to get five in. A lot of people in other conferences looking at that bubble in the Big East and very scared right now. In the ACC, the Terps are up 40-28. to 28. They say if you're going to sell something, get yourself a captive audience. Well, watch the sleeve. Okay, there you go. This place is going to be a gold mine. I'm not picking that up. Hiding it from your roommate? That's not nice. Oh, I knew I didn't bring no cash. I'm just trying to fit in. No need to go to the store. I got the 7-Up right here. When you bring the 7-Up, everyone is your friend. Okay, that's enough being friends. Where are you guys going? Brace yourself. You've never experienced the awesome power packed into new Listerine pocket pack strips. Each tiny strip dissolves instantly, killing germs to leave your mouth feeling so clean, you'll wonder how we did it. Cool Mint Listerine pocket packs. Kill the germs, heal the clean. I like to look at things of beauty. They make me dream. They make me wish. They make me smile. The all-new Lexus ES300. A new world of luxury. We moved into a new house where mom got this great new job. I heard her talking to dad about doing the right thing with her retirement money. Something about rollover which gave me this great idea. Come on, baby. Come on. Roll over. Roll over. I'm just gonna turn your body this way. I hope her rollover was easier. It must be. No load mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. This is Championship Week, presented by 7UP in our halftime report. I want to remind everyone what's coming up later on today on ESPN. You've got NC State and Virginia in the ACC. Then the Patriot League Championship game, American and Holy Cross. Pitt, Miami, UConn, and Notre Dame in the semifinals of the Big East Tournament. And then on ESPN2 in the Big Ten, the top seed Wisconsin facing Iowa. And Steve Alford's squad thinks they can make a run. Then in the ACC, the quarterfinals, Duke and North Carolina, as Digger pointed out, usually that is a Sunday game, not a Friday game. But this year, they meet in the first round and wait for us against Georgia Tech. In the Big 12, Kansas went unbeaten this year. You know they are going to get a number one seed regardless of what happens in this tournament. Oklahoma, however, they likely need a win. They beat Kansas State in their only uh, time they played them this year. They beat them, but they probably, I think, need to win this tournament to get the one seed. I really don't think they need to win it. With Hollis Price back in that lineup, that means this team's healthy. The committee always looks at the strength of your team, the health of your team. But Oklahoma's already knocked off Maryland, beat them bad, and they also beat Connecticut. So for those two wins, I feel now if they get to the finals, they still get the number one seed out west because of the strength of their schedule, the strength of the conference. This is a solid basketball team. It's theirs to lose that number one seed out west. There have been underachieving teams in every conference this year, and I think if you point to the Pac-10, you've got to look at UCLA coming off that loss oh, to horrible. Cal last night. So the semifinals are Oregon, USC, and Cal against Arizona. Love Southern Cal are on the mission. Don't forget last weekend, Oregon beat them by two. Southern Cal now with Sam Clancy and company. Five guys in double figures. They just destroyed, destroyed Stanford last night. I love Southern Cal. The other game, Arizona, they're happy because they, I, I think they punished Cal last weekend, but Cal's a good team.
Arizona actually got the sweep, and Oregon swept USC as well. In the Ivy League, things would have been so easy on Princeton had they not allowed a three-way tie to match up. So now we are down to the final two. Yes, we are. And when you look at that final two, to me, it's Penn playing at Lafayette against Yale. They split during the regular season. But I just think Fran Dunphy's done a great job with his team. They had to beat Princeton and Princeton when both Princeton and uh, Penn lost at Yale on the road, but now the fact is Yale plays Thursday, Saturday. Penn's had a little rest. I give Fram Duffy's team the edge. Very physical team on the front line. Yale is solid, but I think Penn wins the Ivy League. All right, a second half in the ACC quarterfinal is coming up. The Maryland Terrapins high flying Mr. Mouton jams it down for the lead over Florida State. ESPN's presentation of Championship Week is presented by 7-Up in your local 7-Up bottler. Make 7-Up yours. And in part by Harley-Davidson Motor Company. The legend rolls on. And by A Season on the Brink, ESPN's first original motion picture. Premier Sunday, March 10th, 8 p.m. Eastern, only on ESPN. Hello? Collect calls. Did you use 1-800-COLLECT? No. One Eight Hundred Collect presents Ava Save a Lot, starring in the most horrifying movie ever. I know you're not calling me with One Eight Hundred Collect. What kind of twist of mind wouldn't want me to save a buck or two? It's so easy. <gasps> what a nightmare! One Eight Hundred Collect, save a buck or two. Imagine me and you. I do. I think about you day and night. It's so Sir. Can I help you, sir? No, thanks. I'm good. Lobster Fest is back. Dive into Red Lobster's mouth-watering celebration of your favorite lobster dishes and succulent new creations. Starting at just $10.99. Red Lobster, go overboard. Right here, right now. Discover your dreams. Explore the unknown. Imagine a new tomorrow. Tech TV, the new television network about technology. Tech TV, television about technology. Tech TV is available now on Direct TV, channel 354. In October, college basketball season tips off. Then the countdown begins. 146 days of regular season action proves who's ready for the six days and nights of madness that comes in March. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of the CAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament and get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. The best basketball of the year is almost here. Don't wait. Order Mega March Madness today. Back in the Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament, Maryland and Florida State, Byron Moton with a huge first half, 14 points, five boards. The Seminoles giving it all the intensity they could after last night's overtime win, but Maryland's talent too much so far, 40, 28, the number two team in the country with a 12-point lead. Welcome back to Charlotte, everybody. Mike Patrick, Jay Billis, glad you could join us on a beautiful day in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a great day to be inside for 22 That's hours right. in a row. <laughs> 70 degrees, but I'll tell you, I didn't think Maryland played all that well in the first half. They did score 40 points. They're up 12, but they settled for a lot of jump shots against that 2-3 zone that Florida State threw up. They only shot eight free throws in the first half, which says a little bit about their aggressiveness putting the ball on the floor while Florida State shot 16 free throws. Now, Maryland clearly the better team, and I think they are well on their way to heading toward the championship game if they play at their peak. Gary Williams wants to see them get there a little bit quicker to, to their peak, that is. It's 40 to 28, the lead a dozen. And Maryland came into this ball game as the top seed, having won their first ACC regular season championship since 1980 as an outright winner. Had a pretty good team that year with Albert King, Buck Williams.
attempted on the switch, couldn't get an advantage. Nigel Dixon. Baxter blocks him, man. It's a jump ball situation. Possession arrow gives it to the Turks. I'll tell you, Lonnie Baxter has no, such great timing. Go, 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 Dixon did a great job of getting position down low and keeping that position, not letting Baxter push him out. And Baxter just went up there and got all ball while it was still in Dixon's hand. Usually when Nigel is that deep, he can just muscle people out of the way. Juan Dixon too strong on the three. Wallace Kowski to Harrington. Can't get away from Blake. Forty twenty-eight. Terps by a dozen with eighteen forty-three to go in the game. Coming, got it. Merrill needs to do a better job on those ball screens. There was a, a switch and not enough time to recover, and that was way too easy. Wilcox tried to switch out, and coming got the easy shot. Dixon at the baseline has it stuffed, but the outlet pass goes right to Blake. 40 to 30, seven holes back within 10. Wallace Kowski with a nice anticipation in the steal. Hey, Maryland letting Florida State hang around, and they are very loose with the ball offensively. Defensively, they've been pretty good, but they need to punish Florida State on the offense. Nigel Dixon, good head fake that time, got the contact, no call. Tipped out to Wallace Kowski. Seminoles coming out with a purpose here in the start of the second half. I'd like to see Cummings be more aggressive offensively because he's got the skills. Right now he wants the ball. He posts Against Juan Dixon. Nice drive. Just like that. Solid decision to post the smaller guard, Juan Dixon. And when Cummings gets the ball, he is a driver, not a shooter. 26-year-old senior has cut the lead to eight. 40-32 with 17-42 left. A lot of companies put out promotional calendars. Great idea for 7-Up. But instead of models, I decided to use the 7-Up truck drivers. Not, not, you know, not that good. Genius. Uh, sexy, kind of. Why do I rent from Enterprise? For more cargo room. More people room. Or more headroom. Enterprise. So easy, it's like having a second car. Or third. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Tina? Hi, you want to see Todd? Mm -hmm. Ready to go? Yeah. Okay. What are you doing? Well, I'm trying to keep the mileage down on this car, so I drive it backwards four days a week. Need a motor oil for a high mileage car? We developed one. Pennzoil High Mileage Vehicle restores the performance of older engines. Come to AutoZone for special savings on Pennzoil's new high mileage vehicle motor oil. It's there to protect you from your worst fear. Take what you want and get out of my house! All we want is in that room. But on March 29th, ah! it's the most terrifying place to be. I'm coming in there! Shut your eyes and don't turn around. Panic Room. Rated R. Opens everywhere March 29th. Maryland has seen its lead cut to eight at 40 to 32 with 17.42 to go. And North Carolina State getting off the bus. They will face Virginia in the second quarterfinal of the day. NC State with its best season in years and years getting set to break that NCAA tournament drought. Maryland needs to go back to work. The Terps going back to the first half of one field goal in the last six minutes and 55 seconds. And you can see a little bit of frustration on the part of the Maryland players as they stand waiting to inbound the ball. They uh, must feel that Florida State is a little too close. And it has been largely because of Maryland's impatience offensively. Now, holding Florida State to 32 points to this point in the game is a pretty solid defensive effort. But Maryland, with all the opportunities that they've had, have not been able to score. And even though the Seminoles are only 12 and 16 and finished 4 and 12 in the Atlantic Coast Conference regular season, you better do more than just show up. Well, this is a capable team, and especially if they get confidence further on into this game. I mean, how many times have we seen upsets when the better team lets the other team hang around? Absolutely. 
Once they start to believe, you can be in trouble. Pass. Baxter forced it, didn't get it. Harrington got a hand on it, but taken away by the Turks. Give credit to Dixon for that. And thrown away by Wilcox. Thought he had Baxter, but missed him. What he had. Williams really getting upset. Well, what Wilcox had was one dribble and a dunk, or one step and a dunk. One of their last 11 in seven minutes after hitting better than 50% at the start of the ball game. The Terps have not scored in this half. And now we've got Nigel Dixon tied up with Baxter, and Big Jelly will get the foul. Good call. Took that off arm, the left arm, and tried to clear out Baxter as Baxter was repositioning, trying to break contact, get around in front. All Baxter was doing was trying to get around to get three-quarter front and discourage the pass from coming in. Juan Dixon left alone from 14 feet. You can put that in the book. One of the best mid-range jump shooters in America. And that's a lost art in this game. He puts that ball on the floor and pulls up from 10, 12 feet, and he is very difficult to stop when he does. Cummings, nice drive and draws the foul on Lonnie Baxter, his second. Cummings spent four years in the Army and has the kind of veteran presence that you just love to have on the floor. He loves to put the ball on the floor and attack the basket. And he knew when he made his drive there that Baxter was going to go for the shot block. And he has the experience to know that you need to attack a shot block and take it right at him and go right into his chest. And that's where he drew that contact was with the body. And Monty Cummings was the guy who hit the game-winning shot in the shocking upset of then number one Duke. Good free throw shooter makes them both at 42 34. Florida State has gone every single possession in this 2 3 zone, and it has been very effective in getting you know, to really to stand around quite a bit and settle for jumping. It's actually given the Terps as much trouble as it gave Clemson last night. Wilcox powers it up, can't get it. Arrington with the rebound out to Cummings. And Cummings will take it in against Blake. They're within six. Arrington did a magnificent job of getting that ball out quickly and shooting it up the court. Went behind his back to get away from Dixon. Arrington and Cummings, the seniors, as if to say, we're not done yet. Juan Dixon, they tried to make too hard a pass. Good interior defense by Florida State. You're exactly right, man. They're trying to go for it all instead of making the easy pass and easy play. Cummings feels that he scored all eight points in this half. They get ten in a row. Can you sense some confidence growing in Crimson right now? You can sense it in Monty Cummings and Delvon Arrington. The seniors are making a run, and they have the number two team in the country back on its heels. They have cut the lead to four. Steve Robinson met his team out near half court, shaking his fist. Look at that great play by Delvon Arrington, and that's the way you attack the basket, using his left hand to avoid the shot block. And on the next play, just putting his head down, putting the ball on the floor, and taking it right into traffic and scoring with a little half hook. And look at Steve Robinson meeting his team out at half court. That is one excited coach. He knows that his team has a chance. When you get somebody hot like Cummings is, you want to ride this guy and make sure he touches it every time down till he can't shoot it anymore. Well, look at his face. That is one determined senior right now. And you mentioned his four years in the Army where he worked as a petroleum supply specialist. And right now, that petroleum is a little bit combustible. He's getting hot. And Maryland's running on fumes just to continue the analogy. And another turnover. And these are bad turnovers, Mike. These yes, have they are in force. Arrington, nice dish. Basket and a foul. Trevor Harvey cuts it to two. Are you kidding? Gary Williams wishes he were. Delvon Arrington is now starting to push the tempo of this game. He is putting the ball on the floor and attacking off the dribble. And a nice play by Harvey, first to catch the ball and then to finish. And right now, we're looking at a very confident Florida State team and one that is going to be that much more difficult for Maryland to beat. 
Harvey, who is not a good free throw shooter with a miss there, and he gets a lane violation. It was Byron Mouton stepping in early. Look at the difference in free throws. That indicates Florida State, as we've seen, is attacking off the dribble and putting Maryland in a position to foul. Harvey hits the second one, 42-41. Sean Bryan. That's that sexy man I met the other night. You want me to get it? No, nah, let the machine pick it up. I don't want him to know I'm home on a Friday night. Hey, yo, Donna, it's Sean. Remember me? I'm at this crazy club right now. There's a lot of cute hotties, but I'm just thinking of you, girl. Uh huh. I know. I'll call you tomorrow. We moved into a new house where mom got this great new job. I heard her talking to dad about doing the right thing with her retirement money. Something about rollover, which gave me this great idea. Come on, baby. Come on. Roll over. Roll over. I'm just going to turn your body this way. I hope her rollover was easier. It must be. No load mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Whoa. Carrie Earnhardt. Woo! Nice ride, Carrie. Yeah, she gets me around. How about let me take a full spin? That ain't gonna happen. Give you a dollar. Show me what you got. <laughs> you letting them drive this car for a dollar? Man, a dollar buys a lot with 10, 10, 220. All calls up to 20 minutes or 99 cents and 7 cents a minute after that. <laughs> hey, man, be careful. I'll be careful as soon as you help me put this wheel <laughs> Dial 10, 10, 220. If you just joined us, surprise, Maryland leads Florida State by one. The Seminoles have not exactly distinguished themselves since joining the ACC. They had one semifinal appearance. That was in 1992, 4-10 and ten overall. But Monty Cummings and Delvon Arrington like to change that, Jay. Well, Monty Cummings has had 10 points in this second half. He's been on fire, and he's put the ball on the floor. The nice head and shoulder fake. And watch this by Arrington. This is when you go behind your back, when you need to, to avoid a defender. And that is the way you finish at the rim. This team outstanding off the dribble. They've got a lineup full of drivers, and they have been driving the ball at will against Maryland's defense. And Maryland has helped out Florida State on the other end. They've turned the ball over four times, trying to make really some difficult passes instead of making the easy pass and making Florida State guard on the other end. Monty Cummings has 17 points on only nine shots from the floor, and Maryland has done its best to help the Seminoles. Four second-half turnovers. That's in four minutes and 50 seconds, and only one field goal. And all of a sudden, they are playing a much more determined Florida State team. More bounce in their step. They are communicating. This team now is ready. And here's a foul away from the ball. It's going to be a hold on Joyner. Just trying to bump cutters underneath in the back line of that zone. Blake to inbound. Dixon to Baxter and Harvey knocked it away. A set play. Baxter goes out to the corner to receive the pass and then goes in for the lob on ball reversal. Taj Holden. Back to Blake. Terps by one. They've been sleepwalking through the second half. Blake drains the three. Huge shot. Well, he may not be a great shooter, but he hits big shots, doesn't he? Makes them when you need them. Joyner goes baseline. Tough pass. Good catch by Harvey. And he misses the line drive jumper. Blocking foul. And the Seminoles upset about that call. They thought they had a charge on that one. Much better attack in transition. Moving the ball from side to side. And it looked like Mouton put his shoulder down. I'm not sure whether Arrington sure was did. there. Usually when you drop that shoulder, you're not the one who gets the benefit of the doubt. 
But as always, the offense always seems to get a better shake out of the charge block calls. That's probably the way it should be. Dixon comes back in. Harvey will go out. Moton with 15 points. He hit all five tries from the free throw line. So after the Seminoles get within one, the Terps are a little spurt in the back by six, and now they show pressure. Play a little 2-1-2 trap when it gets across half court. See if they can set up Cummings again. A couple screens at the top of the key. Now he'll take the jumper. Too strong Dixon with the rebound. Well played by Byron Mouton. Playing off him, going underneath screens. worry about Cummings knocking down jump shots. You got to worry about him putting the ball on the floor and attacking the rim. Dixon thought about it, gets to Mouton. Dixon guarded by Harrington, shot clock at nine. Holy tough turnaround shot from the baseline. But a good pass by Mouton down into the short corner, but you got to make a move quickly down there or that is jail. 7-0 run for the Terps as the Seminoles challenge over. Yes! And Nigel Dixon called for an offensive foul. All he needs to do is keep that arm out. He keeps bringing it down and getting it around Lonnie Baxter's neck just about. You can see, watch his left arm. When he puts it right around that neck, all you need to do is put it out. He's big enough that that body is going to keep people away from him. You don't need to push off in addition. And Steve Robinson saying my... Uh, my man keeping his hands up, but he's keeping them up and out. And putting that big body on the bench. And he will have to sit at the 13.09 mark. Cummings will also sit down for Florida State. Nicholas in from Maryland. Blake, good ball movement to Juan Dixon. You get him open. They'll just destroy him. He's just a big game player. Juan Dixon has 14. The lead is back to double digits. One thing, though, about Dixon, he has not been shooting the ball quite as well as he did earlier in the season, but still very effective. Joyner had to double clutch that one a little bit, and here come the Turks. Three on two. Nicholas, good catch. And a beautiful shot to foul. What a great play by Drew Nichols. First the catch. Then the finish. Well, that last time up, Gary, uh, time out, Gary Williams may have awakened his ball club. Lonnie Baxter just about pulled that rebound down with one hand, but that pass right behind the left ear of Drew Nicholas. Not only did he catch it, but he caught it without walking and then finished a play while getting fouled. That's solid. It's also self-preservation. You may have been knocked unconscious if he hadn't <laughs> caught it. Have that thing take your head off. Terps have scored 12 points in the last 2-11 to regain the big advantage. The ConAgra Foods Big East Championship down to the final four. Tonight, ESPN's exclusive coverage of the semis. Two games, 7 and 9 Eastern on ESPN. Pittsburgh against Miami, UConn against Notre Dame. College Basketball Championship Week presented by 7-Up on ESPN. And for more information, as always, you can log on to ESPN.com. And if you haven't seen much of Pittsburgh, take a look at the guards that Ben Howland puts on the floor. Not just Brandon Knight, who's one of the smartest players in the country, but also Julius Page and Jerron Brown, two guys that are strong and can really defend. I read this the other day. This was the last year for Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. That's right. The uh, Panthers moving into a nice new facility. And they're taking a nice team with a uh, brand new attitude into it. Ben Hallett's done a magnificent job with that program. Terps on a 13-0 run. Usually I hate to see the old buildings close, but that one I'll make an exception. Yeah, it's time. Juan Dixon baseline. The Terps have scored 15 in a row. Now they're playing like number two. A little one-two, one-one pressure, and Holden has been great on the ball. Joyner hit the underside of the basket on his inbounds pass. Dixon will pick up his third personal. 
Terpsko with that full court press. 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. Difficult to even get it in with Holden up there. Bad pass, and Blake gets down court to pick it off. Boy, Holden has done a nice job on the ball, really taking away vision. 6-10, long arms, and active. In this run, the Terps have hit all five of their shots. They can just be all over you in a heartbeat. Baxter. Finally a miss. The rebound to Antoine Dixon ahead to Bracey. Blake is back, may have gotten a piece of it. And out of bounds to Merrill. See, Blake did a nice job there with that two-on-one break. Just stayed in front and made his man shoot over the top. 57-41 with 11.48 to go. I never worry what people say about me. What the hell are you thinking about out there? I'm not nice. If he throws an elbow, you hand in the mouth! Nice is for women's magazines. Back to where we started, right? Nice is for losers. Brian Dennehy is Bobby Knight. Don't you kids get it? Playing my game is what got you here! A season on the brink. Premier Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. What successful man doesn't have a temper? Viewer discretion is strongly advised. In October, college basketball season tips off. Then the countdown begins. 146 days of regular season action proves who's ready for the six days and nights of madness that comes in March. Supplement your local CBS Sports coverage of NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament and get up to 37 games from outside your area from the first three rounds, including the Sweet 16. The best basketball of the year is almost here. Don't wait. Order Mega March Madness today. This month on DirecTV Customer News, we're unwrapping some great new packages. Special entertainment packages with something for everyone in your family. Plus, we'll give you tips on how to get the most out of your DirecTV system, and we'll take a tour of our great new website. See what channels are included in each package, upgrade, or compare prices on DirecTV.com. Just tune to Channel 201 for DirecTV Customer News. See you there. In the Big 12, number one seed Kansas taking on Colorado. Got there by beating Nebraska. And Drew Gooden from deep as well can do it inside and outside, 41-27. And Michigan State has been knocked out by Indiana, 67-56. All right, John, we had a tight one for a while, but Maryland now on top by 16 at 57-41. One of the most exciting teams in the conference, North Carolina State, has gotten it done with youth this year. Freshmen played a key role. They had their first 21 season in 13 years. Josh Powell's contribution primarily in the paint. While the Jewels of New York led all ACC freshmen average better than 10 points a game. And Ilyan Eftimov with his uncanny ability to make the right play all year long. Very mature. And the pack improved by seven games from last season and is poised to return to the big dance. They'll be playing Virginia following this game. Then tonight, North Carolina meets Duke and Georgia Tech against Wake Forest. Here, Pete Gillen's Cavaliers arriving at the Charlotte Coliseum. And it has been a down last part of the season for them. Took that huge win over Duke at home, which may have given them uh, a lot of optimism coming into this tournament. Baxter scores, the lead's up to 18, the biggest of the night for the Turks. And Cummings whipped one off of Wallacekowski's hand out of back. And Steve Robinson can see the end. His team got within one, made a big run, but then uh, it looked like all he did was manage to upset the Terrapins. Well, the Terps are just so explosive. You can see starting out one for five, turned it over four times, but when they concentrated and really attacked, Awfully difficult for Florida State to stop this outstanding basketball team. Three-fourths of the way through the game, Steve Blake with six assists. T.J. Ford of Texas, the only player in the country with a higher assist average. T.J. Ford not playing with a whole lot of shooters. If he had some shooters yeah. on that team, he'd probably average 12, 13 a game. What an extraordinary point guard. Sometimes you can have a great point guard who gets virtually no assists because the guys he throws to the ball to can't knock it in the ocean. Wallace-Kowski kicked it out of bounds, so it's a new 35 on the shot clock. See, 
Florida State has a different look about them now than they did three, four minutes ago. Nichols had the three and passed on it. No different lineup, at least on the interior right now for Maryland. Holden, the better shooter. Randall, the guy you want to get the ball in the paint. Holden to Randall. Got it. Boy, what a nice pass. That's the way you attack. The pass to the baseline was to set up the next pass. That's the pass that led to the assist. 61 to 41. What was a one-point game he is now on the verge of being a blowout. And Ryan Randall, who came out of junior college to give the Terps even more depth up front with a nice block. Randall went to Allegheny Community College, the same junior college that produced Steve Francis. Wallace-Kowski turned and missed. Big weekend for the Wallace-Kowski family. Keith Wallace-Kowski plays for Dayton. They're still alive in the A-10 tournament. Reach around by Harvey. And even though this is a veteran Florida State team, they've got some really good-looking young players. They've got some good pieces. It's just so hard to build and get confidence when you play in this league. Look at Randall battle inside. He couldn't save it, knocked out of bounds. We're at the ACC tournament in Charlotte, North Carolina. More than 23,000 on hand for the start of the quarterfinals. Florida State and Maryland. It was a one-point game. It seems just moments ago. But the Terps with 17 assists in this game have opened up a 20-point lead. One thing that Maryland has done in this ballgame, while they have not been particularly efficient or patient offensively for most of the game, they have guarded very well. And I have really admired the way this team has approached this season. They've kept their horizon low. They've concentrated from game to game. And I think that's why they've got that 15-1 record in regular season play. What an extraordinary accomplishment. Well, they had been stuck in the Sweet 16 until a year ago when they went to the Final Four, and only the fourth meeting with Duke kept them out of a national championship game and I think in their mind a chance to win it all and they come back this year I think a much stronger team than the one that went to the final four last year and you know Mike I think they saw the possibility sometimes the ACC can beat you down and you get a sense that maybe you're not as good as you think you are but the truth was last year Maryland could have lost to Duke three times during the regular season and still won the national championship that's, right. that's how the tournament works great pass from Dixon holding with a miss got his own rebound and this year, Maryland can beat Duke two out of three and not win the national title. And I'll tell you what, this team is very capable of winning it all. I think more capable than even they were last year. I agree with that. Maryland has scored the last 21. Harvey, point blank range, can't get it down. And that may have been the story of Florida State season. Close, but not enough. Juan Dixon back to Nicholas. And Nicholas, knowing the clock is his friend, says, let's use some. At some point, Florida State's going to have to come out and guard. You can't save it much longer. How many times have they tried that pass? It, it will not get there. Dixon's tried it three or four, and it's not been close to succeeding. Harrington kicks it out to Cummings. He's, his scoring has kept this team in the game. Wallace Kowski with a rebound, and Holden had a big handful of his shirt. Wallace Kowski's a nice play. Polished, good hands, one shooter, left hander. Gary Williams, I think, probably saying the same thing that we were just saying is doesn't matter how many times you throw that pass, it's not getting through. <laughs> you know, we talked about, uh, you mentioned Wallace Kowski being a good fundamental player. Uh, we talked before the game, a lot of teams that have not had recent success seem to go far more for athletes than basketball players. I think Wallace Kowski is a much better basketball player than he is an athlete. Absolutely. And I think he has a lot of value and he doesn't get a lot of help in that department. Well, during the summertime when you're out on the circuit recruiting, you will hear guys talking about great athletes. This guy's really athletic. When the October rolls around and practice starts, you don't need athletes, you need players. That's right. <laughs> And you see so many games where a guy has a wide-open 12-foot jump shot, and you just know in your heart of hearts he's not going to make it. 
because he doesn't have that skill. He's either got a 25-footer or a jam in mind, and that's it. Well, this is a gross generalization, but kids don't shoot as much anymore. What they do is play. They play a lot of pickup basketball. They might spend three hours on the court, but they'll only have the ball in their hands for about 10, 12 minutes. And you are better off taking some time to shoot and keep the ball in your hands and develop than you are just running up and down a pickup game. Richardson hits the second free throw. 7.56 to go. The Seminoles, one try after another. They just can't get it down. That free throw was their first point in the last 7.15. You know, when I was a young man riding a Harley Davidson motorcycle, oh, that's all I could think of. I mean, that open road, that rumbling engine, the wind in my face. Oh, you want a Harley? Now I never got it. I spent the money on aluminum siding instead. Let's go see what Grandma's doing. Huh? Yeah? Psst. Howie, don't miss the big wireless sale at Radio Shack! I swear I heard Terry. Yes, Howie, you clearly heard Terry. Now get a clear digital Sprint PCS phone by Samsung. The N200 is just $99.99 after a $50 Sprint PCS mail-in rebate. Then, save another $50 only at Radio Shack. Get 4,000 clear wireless minutes for only $39.99 a month. I just love it when I get into his head. Howie! The Sprint Store at Radio Shack. Patrolling your neighborhood at Friday. This guy is the worst actor I have ever seen. Showtime. Rated PG-13. What's your problem? You're getting tips from T.J. Hooker. Oh! You okay there, T.J.? Starts Friday, March 15th. My life has never been more demanding. And to help keep my mind and body active, there's Centrum Performance. It's a complete multi with higher levels of bees plus ginkgo and ginseng to help re-energize my mind and body. Centrum Performance. Life demands it. In the SEC earlier this year, Georgia had beaten LSU by just one. Today, LSU's Brad Bridgewater underneath, plus gets fouled, LSU leading by four. Michael J. John, it's just amazing to watch Georgia play. They have been uh, a, a shock all year long. No matter what they do, I'm surprised. Well, Jim Herrick has got a way of making believers out of his players. Sometimes they believe they're better than they are. And that's probably how he lost D.A. Lane. He convinced Lane he was so good, he left. <laughs> Last seven minutes and 15 seconds, the Terps have just stormed the gates of the Seminoles. They scored, hit eight of 12 shots while Florida State has a free throw. They have missed all 13 of their field goal tries in that span. And that's after they got within one. Well, this team might have taken some of the pent-up energy that Gary Williams had over on the sideline <laughs> and put it into their play because you could tell that Gary and his staff not pleased with the level of concentration that this Maryland team was using on the offensive end. It was so pent-up it was spewing over. <laughs> Brilliant job by Gary Williams in the last four or five years. He has built a powerhouse here. Well, he's been terrific everywhere he's been. Started out at American, went to Boston College, took them to the NCAA tournament. Built, I thought, a, a, a tremendous program at Ohio State yes. before taking off to Maryland, his alma mater. And Maryland was deep down at the bottom of the ACC when he took over this job. They were on probation. They were not allowed to be on television. And one of the things, in addition to Gary's hard work, that helped that program get back up again was the fact that Walt Williams decided not to leave. Exactly. The Bob Wade era had destroyed Maryland basketball. And Gary Williams could have easily bailed out when he found out about the NCAA sanctions, none of which were his fault. He could have just walked away, but it's his alma mater. He loves it. He decided to stick it out. Nigel Dixon with a couple of shots. Another tip. Nigel again. And Nigel saying, where was that whistle a little earlier? They're hammering me. I'm not sure he noticed those guys were there. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you, give Lonnie Baxter some credit, because I'll tell you what, if, if Big Jelly were turning to go to the basket on me, I would just run away. Those are some powerful bodies banging against each other underneath. They got him, when he showed up to school, 333 pounds, four XL shorts. He could get one leg in the shorts. Well, then they went to six XL, except they didn't 
write 6XL in him, they wrote Nigel in him. Well, take a look when he lifts the ball to his head. He's the only player in America whose head is bigger than the ball. He puts the ball in front of his head, and you can still see head. <laughs> this is one big man. Nigel, we're not making fun of you, man. We really admire you for what you have done in the last year, losing 80 to 90 pounds. Because he would come in before and play a couple of minutes, and it looked like he had run a marathon. And now Nigel can give you five or six solid minutes at a time. Well, he's incredibly effective. I mean, using that big body down low, he's got a, a very nice touch, and he's tough. He throws his body around there. He's unafraid. Actually, the only people are, that are afraid are the ones around him. Nice cut. Dixon powers it up between two players and draws the foul. There is no player in America I admire more than Juan Dixon. This young man plays on both ends. He has a great demeanor. He keeps his mouth shut, and all he does is plays, and all he does is beat you. Well, the part about keeping your mouth shut is a great point, too. Uh, there are too many guys in this game who don't do that. Well, he lets his game do his talking, and he will probably leave Maryland if they play as many games down the stretch as I think they will. Right. As the all-time leading scorer, their all-time leader, he'll be right there for steals. He's got Johnny Rhodes still ahead. I mean, you're talking about one of the great players in the history of this league, and when he got there, Nobody knew who he was That's except right. for Gary Williams. He only, need, he only needs 52 points right now to pass the great Glenn Bias as Maryland's all-time leading scorer. I will never forget the first day I saw him. I was at practice at Maryland early in the season, and he was a red, he was a redshirt freshman and shooting by himself at a side basket. Nigel gets the follow. And I said to Gary Williams, who's that skinny kid over there? And he turned around and looked at me and he says, his name's Juan Dixon. And you know who he's like? He's just like Johnny Dawkins. And I said, no way, because Johnny Dawkins is one of the best players this league's ever produced. Yeah. And, and Gary was right, wasn't he? He was right. Like he, he, he is very much like Johnny Dawkins, and that is the ultimate compliment. Juan Dixon out of Baltimore. Baxter has his shot blocked. Actually, he's got some of the... Uh, Right on cue. Gliding movements that Johnny Dawkins had. It was the way guys carry themselves. Almost got the steal. He used to be more of a gambler as a defender, if you can believe that. He's much more fundamentally sound now. Well, if you show the ball, if you expose it, he will take it from you. It's just that simple. He has taught a lot of lessons to young players about keeping control of that ball. Under five and a half minutes to go. Coming foul on the way in. No bucket. Like they got Nicholas reaching in. Nope, it's Dixon. Juan Dixon today. 20 points, five rebounds, four assists, steals. Just another day at the office. The thing that bothers me about Dixon, though, is he plays as hard as he does. He doesn't sweat, and he doesn't breathe hard. <laughs> You're just jealous. You're darn right I am. And that's where he's just like Johnny Dawkins. As Dawkins could play 40 minutes without a drop of sweat being on. Cummings at the line, he'll get another. The rest of us were out there panting like St. Bernard's. And he looked great, as does this guy. And running at about the same speed. Cummings both free throws, 67 of 48. And Dixon could easily be player of the year, not only in this conference, but in America. He just has the, uh, I guess you could call it misfortune of writing in the same league with Jason Williams. But I would not have any qualm with anyone who voted him for national player of the year. That's how good he is. Oh, he's brilliant. Great pass. Wilcox can't hit it. Blake. Doesn't get an assist off of a tremendous speed. Well, he saw that cut before it happened. He didn't get a shot right of this. Look, look at his eyes. Like, he sees it before it happens. He's looking at Baxter and then sees the cut by Chris Wilcox. I mean, that's just a solid play by a great point guard. Wilcox is the only North Carolina player on Maryland's roster. He's from Whiteville, North Carolina. And an extremely talented young man. Very gifted, and he's got an aptitude for this game. He's getting better and better. And there is a lot of talk about his upside, and rightfully so. He's 
he's got a great future ahead of him. But you hope this young man has his head screwed on right and doesn't listen to those who talk about what's ahead of him. And he thinks about how best to oh, sort of yeah. be responsible to his talent. Because it is not enough just to be drafted and make a few bucks. This guy can be a great player at the next level, but he has got to nurture that talent. And I think the best place to do it is on the college level. Jay, you're right. He's, there are a lot of fundamental things that he needs to do better. He already has the spectacular stuff down. If he can do the play-to-play -play kind of things that will make him an impact player, he's got a chance to be an All-American. He's that good. He really does. And, and if he can work day-to-day -day on his post moves and first and foremost on understanding and learning how to dominate a game. He's done some great things this year with the lights on in big games against Illinois, against Duke. But you can see his, his points and rebounds, very solid, but he can do much better. Dixon misses the second, Wilcox with a rebound. The lead is 21, under five minutes to go. Collins into the ball game, and he gets a run. Great quickness, and again, give credit to Steve Blake for pushing that ball ahead. Andre Collins, Andre Collins is a freshman backup point guard from Crisfield, Maryland. As Gary Williams goes deep into his bench. Richardson got the roll. And this young man is going to be a player. He is long and lean and very athletic. And a nice touch. That's gone if you're not careful. A dangerous pass. And Richardson thought he had an easy layup on the play. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that move. Oh, you hope that would go in after that. Hello. Now, that wasn't quite stealing it from Jason Williams right before <laughs> halftime, but it was close. That, the play you just spoke about, was one of the great plays I ever saw. Well, that was a defining moment because it was. it was a defining game, and it spoke very well with Steve Blake. He is a winner, pure and simple. Now, most guys, knowing you're guarding Jason Williams, are not even going to go out there and attempt it because you're probably going to end up looking bad. Well, that's a great point. Steve Blake has guts and he's got daring. And I'll tell you what, for a guy that has won as much as he has, not only in the high school level where his Oak Hill team, 31-0 his last year, but on the college level as well, he doesn't get near the credit he deserves. No, he doesn't. High screens here. Collins can choose which way to go off. Collins doesn't get a lot of minutes. Mouton goes baseline, hit by Cummings on the way up and a foul. Byron Mouton has been a guy also who has really had a solid year. Byron Mouton was the leading scorer for Tulane his first two years in school. He's from Louisiana and almost committed to Kentucky. But went to play for Perry Clark and decided to leave when Clark decided to leave and has really done well for himself at Maryland. Fit in very nicely. And a guy, again, who could be the leading scorer somewhere else, but sure could. chose to go to a place where he could win a championship. 17 points and seven rebounds today. And really, there is only so much publicity to go around. And when you've got Blake, who leads the ACC and assists one of the national leaders, you got Juan Dixon, Player of the Year Kennedy. you got Lonnie Baxter, who's been an all-star for years. There's just not enough ink to go around, and Mouton doesn't get the credit. There's the play by Blake. Are you kidding? 75-52. Ah, vacations. They didn't always bring you peace, but at least you had peace of mind, knowing your car, family, and the home you left behind were all protected by State Farm. And now that you're older, we can offer you even more peace of mind with State Farm's deferred annuities, which offer you a choice of options and benefits, like a guaranteed monthly retirement income from a company recognized for financial strength. So call your State Farm agent today. Triple miles from participating airlines when you stay at any choice hotel in the U.S. and the Caribbean. And you'll also get the chance to enter our 2 million mile giveaway. One lucky traveler will win 1 million miles. And 10 people will win 100,000 miles. Sounds like it's a good time to hit the road. For reservations, call 1-800-4-CHOICE. Okay, good news. That broadband thing we all want? Got it figured out. Honey, you call the phone company. Tracy, you're digging the trench. Shovel's in the garage. I'm going up on the roof to assess the satellite possibilities. Check out the schematics. Appreciate it. Let's go! Run, 
We know how you feel. And that's why Circuit City offers one-stop high-speed internet access. You can find what's available where, compare options, and arrange installation. Circuit City, we're with you. Yeah, we can get broadband at Circuit uh, City. The top-seeded Maryland Terrapins on their way to the semifinals. They lead by 23. Great backcourt play again today, Jay. Well, this pair fits together so well. Steve Blake, a great passer, an outstanding defender, and just a flat-out winner playing with Juan Dixon, one of the great players you will ever see in this league. And we heard a lot of talk at the beginning of the year how Duke's Chris Duhon and Jason Williams were the best backcourt in America and maybe the best ever, but I'm not sure that Gary Williams, in fact, I know, he wouldn't trade these two for anybody. And I'd, rightfully so. I'd take either set and be really happy. You would be very That's a good decision to have to make, yeah. I guess. Got three guys off the street. You got a shot at winning some games. And you take a look at the eyes of those two players, Dixon and Blake, and those are eyes that are firmly set on the prize. This team knows that they can win a national championship, but they've also handled each step along the way very intelligently and very maturely. You got to give all the credit to that man right there, Gary Williams, along with that fine duo of Dixon and Blake. You know, the last few years, Duke has had the attitude that uh, everything leading up to the Final Four was just to get ready for that. And Maryland has taken that same attitude after reaching the Final Four last year. Richardson, tough outside shot. You know, there's a lot of debate over what Coach of the Year means, not only in any specific conference, but nationally. And, well, Herb Sendak, I think, will get a lot of votes, and rightfully so, because he's done a great job at North Carolina State. My Coach of the Year is Gary Williams. Mine, too. 15 and 1 in this league does not happen very often. Nice dish to Wilcox. Spin won't go. Randall with a rebound. Wilcox with a tip. Wallace Kowski for Florida State. Of course, Mike Krzyzewski has made himself virtually ineligible for any Coach of the Year awards anymore with his success. Randall with a foul of Nigel Dixon scores. And I think that's unfair too. Once the expectations become so high once you match those expectations don't you deserve those accolades you do but then it becomes an issue of having to do something spectacular in order to get noticed i think that's a price that most coaches would be happy to pay yeah. that uh, i'll take a bunch of final fours and chances for national championships and you can keep the coach of the year trophy because how many times have we seen a guy get coach of the year that get fired two years later <laughs> that's a good point Nigel gets the roll. Nigel Dixon, 13 points and 12 boards. Almost had a double-double last night, 9 and 13, so he has had an outstanding ACC tournament. Which Nigel right now is a spectator. He is in backcourt watching the other nine guys go at it. It's a little late in the game for Nigel to be sprinting down court. Coming up between games, we'll have a chance for championship week update presented by 7-Up. Kansas and Colorado. Of course, everybody here in the ACC would like to see Kansas knocked off. So uh, you would have the one and two teams in the country here. Have some Big Ten talk in the mid-major bubble teams. I'm sure Digger will have plenty to say about Southern Illinois and Butler and their opportunities to get in. I'll tell you one mid-major that there should be no discussion about that should get in. Uh, quickly and easily, and that's Pepperdine. I have seen Paul Westfall's team play quite a bit this year, and that is one outstanding team that would have competed favorably if they were a Pac-10 team. I mean, they beat UCLA at UCLA. They beat USC at the Forum, which is essentially a home court for Southern Cal. Sure. That's a terrific team. Has Digger taken the lead from Dick? Does he have 106 teams in the field already? Well, I don't know. One, one thing I do want to hear from Digger, though, is the difficulty of playing himself in the movie A Season on the Brink. I'm not sure that even Digger can capture the <laughs> essence of Digger on film. Here's Big Jelly going at it. Nice little up and under move. And when he makes the turn here, just kind of throws himself into it. And again, I think that was a terrific job of acting and going down because when you're as big as Nigel Dixon, when you bump into somebody, people assume that a lot of force was put behind it. And that's where some big guys across the country, a lot of seven-footers, like Dan Dan Zurich of UCLA, have a disadvantage. They get a lot more fouls called upon them just because sure. of their size, in my opinion. Nine of those 12 rebounds that Nigel Dixon had today, offensive rebounds. Once he has position underneath, 
Might as well try to move your house across the street as get him out of the lane. That has made himself into a good player. Sure has. 145 to go in this one. Randall hits the free throw. Maryland will now get ready for the semifinals tomorrow. Of course, they come in as the favorite to meet Duke for the championship, but things always don't always go to form here in the ACC tournament. Randall hits them both. And not at all an easy draw for Maryland either. No. Their next opponent is going to be a very difficult out. Cummings. Look at that. Stuffed. Jump ball. Ryan Randall has long arms and he is nicknamed Sleepy. But he was not asleep on defense there. We're gonna go, look, that is really solid defense. He set himself and went straight up and let the ball come to him. That's terrific. That is all ball. That's a great play. Didn't swat down on it or come across. Great form. Another block by Randall. And that's what you're bringing off your bench. Now this is one solid team, one through eight. Adam Craig is into the ball game for Florida State as Arrington hits a tough shot. Boys, he had a nice career. Every year he's been in Florida State, he's been in the top three in the ACC in assists. And Delvon Arrington was a partial qualifier, but graduated in four years and got his fifth year back. The first ever to do that in the ACC. And that is a tremendous accomplishment. Hats off to him. And hats off to Florida State for giving him the opportunity to do it. Absolutely. Arrington again with a long shot. McCall with a rebound. For Maryland, we're under 50 seconds. And it's 81 to 59. Collins with a wide open jump shot. And everybody wants to get in the box score. Collins has done a nice job since he's been in this ballgame. Really a quick player. Jay was talking about the draw, and here's what you'll see as Maryland in the draw will face the winner of our upcoming game with Virginia and North Carolina State. Then tonight, North Carolina and Duke meeting for the first time ever in the quarterfinals. Georgia Tech and Wake Forest will cap it off at 9 Eastern. The semis tomorrow here at the Charlotte Coliseum, 1.30 and 3.30 on ESPN. We hope you'll join us for that. Maryland already in with only 36.4 seconds to go. And this is the last hurrah for Cummings and Arrington and the other seniors on this ball club. Monty Cummings, the 26-year-old senior, 19 points. And he gave it everything he had. You could just tell that he and Arrington knew they had to have big games to give their team a chance. And Cummings went on a withering scoring streak to get Florida State back to within one point in the second half before the roof caved in. Good steal by Collins for the easy layup. And Andre Collins with eight points. Arrington will finish as the leading assist man in the history of Florida State basketball. A lot to be proud of. And it looks those two men. And it looks from that line like he didn't have a good game. And the reason was Steve Blake. That's it. The Seminoles threw a scare into Maryland, but the Terps had too much. Gary Williams win it. And the Seminoles are done at 12 and 17. The final 85-59 for Jay Billis. This is Mike Patrick on behalf of our entire ESPN crew. Thanks for watching, everybody. First game of the ACC. Back to John Saunders in the studio. Alongside.